Welcome to Beside the Burn for Wednesday, the 22nd of September. And we continue finding Jesus in Genesis. And we're looking at Noah uh, from Genesis chapter 6, 7, 8. And today, uh, as we have been doing this week, uh, we're looking at some of the things that we weren't able to do on Sunday. And we're looking at the comparisons between Jesus and Noah and Jesus and the ark. Because as we look at the life of Noah and as we look specifically today at the ark itself, we see Jesus in a whole different light. Our understanding of what Jesus does is perhaps expanded because we can clearly see what happens with an ark in a physical flood and people being inside that ark and the protection that it offers. And sometimes we maybe find that difficult to work out in the spiritual sense that we have Jesus and there's sin and there's death and yet we are protected. And and how does that work out? Well, God is saying to us, look at the ark. See how the ark functions in this physical realm. And then you can work out how Jesus acts in the spiritual realm. And that gives us tremendous insight today as we come to this. So we're going to see today that Jesus saves us from God's judgment. Now, of course, we've already looked at this a little bit as we've gone along, but we're going to look specifically at verses today that show us how Jesus saves us from God's judgment by looking at the ark and seeing how the ark saves us. So in Genesis 6, 17, God is saying, I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. So this is the judgment. And be under no illusions, this is a spiritual judgment. God has looked at the earth and he has seen that there is wickedness all around and so he is judging the people because of their wickedness. There's one man who stands out, that is Noah. And so he's going to save Noah and his family and start again with them. But God is bringing judgment and he brings the judgment here in, in a physical way for us to see so that, again, we're not confused by the spiritual nature of this. We can actually see things that we understand. So God is bringing flood water and that flood water is his judgment on the world. This is how he's going to destroy the world. Now, we know that Jesus Christ is coming back again one day his second coming. We know that in that second coming that he will judge the earth. And this is giving us a foretaste of it, telling us what that's going to be like in physical terms as to something that's coming spiritually. Now, people have come up with all sorts of theories that even if they do believe in Jesus and even if they believe in the second coming, they'll maybe try and sidestep this idea of his judgment coming. And they'll make up some theories like, well, whenever Jesus appears, there'll be time to trust in him. There'll be time uh, to fall down before him and beg him for forgiveness and he'll not turn us away. But that won't be the case. That isn't what happens because here the people could see the rain starting to fall. They could see Noah getting into the ark and seal, and God sealing it up so that they'd be protected. And yet the people still rejected the offer of salvation. They would not turn to God. And we see that in today's world, don't we? where we wonder why will people not turn to God? We've had this whole COVID pandemic and in the early days of lockdown, people were looking to God and trying to to see if there was anything in God. But then as soon as there was a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, maybe with the vaccines, maybe with lockdown being lifted, they just rejected God and weren't interested in him. There may be some who have come to faith and we praise God for that. But the majority of people have put their trust and their faith in the vaccine rather than trusting in God. And therefore, we see how this judgment comes and how people don't turn to God. 
And Noah and the flood gives us a very clear understanding of what's going to happen at the second coming. So I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth and it's going to destroy all life under the heavens. And at the second coming, that judgment is going to do the same. Every creature that has the breath of life in it. Remember that breath of life, how God breathed into Adam and Eve and, and from the dust of the ground brought life. And his life is in these creatures, but he's going to destroy them because they've rejected him. And everything on earth will perish. And we know from scripture that God does not desire that anyone would perish. But if they consistently reject him and they do not trust in him, then they will perish. And that points to the second coming as well, where people will say, well, look, God's a loving God. He's a compassionate God. He's going to return and there's no way he's going to punish everyone. He is, because that's what happened here in the flood. And therefore, we know that it will happen in the future. So looking back to the beginning of Genesis, we see everything that's going to happen in the future as well. And it's interesting that many theologians would say that if you can understand the first 11 chapters of Genesis, then you have a true understanding of all the theology in the Bible as to what happens there and then also looking ahead as to what will happen because it's all contained in these opening few chapters. So then in Acts 4 verse 12, as we move into the New Testament to see what Jesus is doing, we're told there that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And this is us looking forward to Jesus coming back again and realising that he is the only place where we can find salvation. There's no other name that uh, we can turn to. There's no one else that can help us. There's no other plan for salvation. It is only Jesus. And that helps us understand as well where other religious groups, where other faiths fit into this story. God is saying very, very clearly to us, there is but one way to get to heaven and that is through Jesus Christ. Salvation is found in no one else. It's not found in any other religion. It's not found in any other set of actions. It's not found in how well you live your life. It is found only in Jesus. And there is no one else that you can turn to. There's no one else who can do what Jesus can do. It is only Jesus. And therefore we turn to him to be saved. Paul says in Romans 5 and verses 9 and 10, since we have now been justified by his blood, whose blood's that? Jesus' blood. It's only because of his blood that we've been justified, that we've been set, as though we'd never sinned. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? The only way to be saved in the flood was to go to the ark and find safety. And the only way for us to be saved from our sin is to go to Jesus, who is our ark today, and he will save us from the judgment of God. And that is a, a wonderful position to be in. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Jesus dies so that we can have life. Jesus has risen and has life now so that we can have eternal life. And if Jesus Christ has died for us, then we can live for him day by day. And he is the only one who can save us from God's judgment. So again, let's take the story of Noah and the flood and the ark and see how that works out in our lives for the second coming, the judgment to come, and the salvation that Jesus alone brings us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, once again today, we thank you for the salvation that we have in Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that as we look ahead and perhaps at times are confused by the second coming, we can see what is going to happen 
because we know about this wooden ark and the destruction of the world in a flood. And therefore, Lord, we know the way that you deal with sin. We know the way that you punish sin. And we know what you will do whenever you come back again. And therefore, Lord, we trust in your death and resurrection. We trust in your shed blood. And we rely upon you because we recognise that there is no one else to rely upon. So, Lord, we bring these things to you in prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen.